Okay, this video is kind of for reference for anybody who needs to know how to get from zero to getting video, genlock, timecode, motion tracking, and camera calibration all working inside of Unreal 5. So, we got Tanner in the background. Can launch Unreal Engine from the Epic Games launcher and it does its thing. Yeah, I got, I got mine on now. Yeah. Um, if you go to film, video, and live events and choose blank, uh, basically all these different presets do is it loads you in with different um, assets right off the bat, so different meshes, and it'll also um, activate different plugins that you need. So blank from film, video, and live events is the closest one that I found to having all of the different versions, or all of the different plugins that you need built right off the bat. Uh, right now you don't need starter content and you don't need ray tracing, you can always turn that on later. I have a couple different windows here pulled up, like you probably won't see live link, genlock, or time code provider initially when you boot up. You can find those by going into window and then virtual production and that's where all these live. <coughs> cool, Steam VR booted back up. So now what you got to do is you have to make sure that all the plugins that you need are activated. So you're going to go to Edit Plugins. And just for reference, the different ones that you need to have active to make all this work is Composure, Steam VR, Blackmagic Media Player, Live Link, Live Link XR, Open XR, Media Framework Utilities, Media IO Framework, and cal Camera Calibration. Um, and I think the only ones that aren't active when you start this are Live Link XR and Camera Calibration. Yeah, so there's that one. Yes, it's gonna make you restart your engine. And camera calibration. Hit restart. Also, you can minimize this, it's not important. Exit out of this. So, in the real world, the signal flow that we have going right now is you have the Blackmagic Ursa <coughs> Mini 12K going out via SDI into the Blackmagic video card inside of our desktop. Um, we're using the Blackmagic DeckLink 8K Pro. So <coughs> how that works is it has four different SDI connectors and you can configure those to be inputs or outputs or basically accept or receive any sort of like video coming in any different settings. So I have three and four disabled, so you can see that right here if you open up the Blackmagic desktop video setup. Um, in the first one, you can see the video is coming in from the Ursa 12K at 2160 uh, P 30 frames. And then on the second one, I have a SDI cable going out into an SDI to HDMI converter, which is then going into the Atomos Inferno monitor, which is how you're going to see your final composite after you've like keyed everything and have your I.O. all set up. So that's going out at 1080p 30 frames, so that's good. And you can confirm you're getting video signal <coughs> into your computer, into the card, by opening up, opening up Media Express and going to Log and Capture. And you can see right now that's the real-time video feed. You can see the levels peaking over here. But that's good for reference, you didn't actually need that right now. So you can exit out of that. Um, okay. So, to get started, you're going to have to pull in your video data into Unreal Engine. So, to do that, you press Control Spacebar to open up your content window. Right click, go to Media, Media Bundle. I'm just going to call this Blackmagic Design underscore video input. Double click on that. And here's going to be all of your details for all of your camera settings and it's really really important that the output settings on your camera match the input settings in Unreal 100% or it's not going to work at all um, and you'll spend a lot of time pulling your hair out trying to figure out what's wrong when it's just your settings aren't aligned. So go to Media Bundle, choose Blackmagic Media Source, twirl this down, go to Blackmagic uh, Configuration and then it's our, we know our video is coming in the DeckLink 8K Pro on the first uh, card. It's coming in at 4K Ultra HD. It's progressive at 30 frames, and that's all set up inside of the camera as well. Timecode format: we're using VITC Video Input Timecode. 
Um, and I believe, actually there's one more thing. Go down to video. <coughs> this is 10-bit YUV and it is sRGB. So we're going to save that, exit out of this. So now if you go back into your content drawer, pressing control spacebar and take this video input and pull it into your scene, you should be able to see a live feed of what's actually happening inside. So if I go and wave my hand around, you'll be able to see it. Cool, so that works. Um, I found, I don't know if this is an engine thing or what exactly the deal is here, but I've noticed that you have to keep this in your scene for your video to remain active, which there's probably a workaround around that, but as far as I'm aware, it doesn't get in the way, it doesn't affect performance or anything, so I really don't care about it. Cool, okay, so now we have video confirmed in here. Now we want to set up time code and gen lock. So to set up your time code, what you're going to do is you have to make a new blueprint class. Go to your content drawer, right click, go to blueprint class, and you're going to twirl down all classes, type in black magic custom time code, or black magic time code provider, what it's called, SDI input. Just like that, I'm going to call this black magic design custom time code that'll be good. Double click on that and you'll see the exact same settings as you saw in your video input IO pop up right here. So Decoding Pro, you're going to want to use the exact same settings that are coming out of your camera again. So 4K Ultra HD, progressive 30 frames, time code format, VITC, that's good. Compile, save, exit out of that. And you're going to want to do that again for Genlock. So Blueprint class, Black Magic Custom Time Step. Now, Unreal Engine calls Genlock Time Step, which essentially all it really is is the frames inside of Unreal Engine and the frames on your camera are firing at the exact same time. Genlock and Time Step are technically different things, but they work the same way for our use case, so it doesn't really matter. Rename that. And you're going to go into here, do the exact same thing. Alter HD. Everything's all good. Compile, save. And then what you're going to do, if you don't have these windows right here, time code provider and genlock, if you go into window, virtual production, you'll see them pop up right here and you can just click on them from that. So this is not actually accurate right now. What you have to do is you have to go into your project settings. And let's do time code first. So type in time code and it'll pop up. Change your time code provider from none to the blueprint that you just created. Uh, Blackman Design custom time code. Change this to whatever your frame rate is. And this one is 30 frames. And you will see it pop up on here, black magic custom time code, 30 frames. Um, this is the absolute time right here, so 930, 38. There's actually an LED display on the camera that will show you this exact same number, so if these don't match, then you have a problem, but these do match, so you know that your camera and Unreal Engine and your black magic card are all reading from the exact same absolute time code. So to get Genlock in here, go to edit project settings, search for Time step, not genlock, time step. Twirl this down. Go to find the blueprint you just created. Should pop up automatically. Sometimes you'll have to reinitialize this, but you can see right now it's online and it's firing, so that means genlock and time code are set up. Oops. So now to get video out of Unreal Engine. Actually, no, what we're going to do first is we're going to create our virtual camera that is going to be eventually mirrored um, of our physical camera. So you're going to go to uh, Add to Project, Cinematic, Cinema Camera Actor, and you can just plop this wherever. Uh, and I already know right now that like a couple of settings that are on the camera so the current focal length is 20, aperture is 2.8. Um, 
custom sensor size. So I know that the sensor on this camera is 27.03 millimeters by 14.25 millimeters. So you're going to plug that in so your sensor size matches your aspect ratio. Um, all this stuff, we can get into it later. Not super important for the time being until you calibrate all your camera settings. Uh, I only changed that to 2.8 just because I know that that's what my current aperture is and that's what my minimum aperture is on this specific lens which is the DZO Pictor Zoom 20 to 55 2.8. So, let's see what am I doing. To get this cinema camera viewport and to get this Blackmagic uh, media import to be showing you the same thing, you're going to have to use a plugin called Composure, which will come automatically. Um, activated if you chose the same starting setup that I did. So go to create new comp, uh, empty comp shot, and then you can rename this. This should show up. This one's a little bigger. Close VP for virtual production. Composure. This also creates a physical object inside of your scene, so it can be referenced later. Like that's where it is right now, but where it is technically doesn't really matter. So you're going to click on your uh, composite, hit create or add layer, go to media plate, twirl this down, click on your media plate, and you're going to need to go to your inputs, twirl down input, go to media source, and you should see your uh, black magic video input right here and that's a live feed from that right now so that's good and then what you're going to want to do is go to your uh, composure hit add new L or add layer element again hit CG layer and it automatically pulls the viewport from the only camera that's in the scene if that is not the case for you you can go to auto receive input and not auto receive but you can go to Where is it? <coughs> oh yeah, uh, composure input inputs. Right now it's inherited, but if you wanted to override it, you'll you can hit override and then you'll find any of your camera actors. So there it is, right there. It's the exact same way to do it. So if you go back to your uh, media plate, we're gonna want to key out this green screen, and this is just gonna be a really sloppy key for the time being. Uh, you're going to go to Composure Transform Compositing Passes, scroll down Transform Passes, go to Chroma Keying, and then if you click on Key Colors, hit this plus. Um, and you can't actually click on this, so what you're going to want to do is click on your media plate, press P, not P, uh, click on yeah, your media plate here, press P, and it'll pull up uh, this window that'll stay in your viewport. So going back to Chroma Keying, if you click on the color, hit the eyedropper tool, and then click anywhere inside of this. All this black, that's uh, where your key is going to be active. So you can exit out of that, hit OK, and obviously you can dial that in more, but for the sake of actually doing what we're doing right now, this is what we're going to have to do. I'm just going to save that. So now you don't actually see anything inside of your Composure composite. So what you have to do is you have to write a little bit of script to get these two elements to talk to each other. So you're going to open up your content drawer, go to material. You're going to call this VP Composure Material. Double click on that to open up the material editing window. And you're going to want a 2D uh, texture sampler parameter 2D. You're going to want two of these. You're going to want to name them exactly what your uh, elements are called inside of your composite. So this one's going to be media plate one. Hit control D to duplicate. 
Alright, what can I call this one? CG underscore element one. Hit enter. And then you're gonna want to use a function that comes with composure called over. Um, and it's taking essentially the RGBA of both of these plates and uh, putting one over the other essentially, putting A over B. So this only works with uh, like constant four vectors, so you have to use an RGBA and if you have just an RGB it's not going to work. So wire those up. This is getting processed as a post-process volume, so you don't really need to worry about a lot of these. If you click on this node, go over to material domain, go to post process. The only option you have is emissive color, so you're going to take your RGBA and plug it into emissive color. Hit save, exit out of that. So now in your uh, compositing, you're going to go to your VP composure, go down to input, wherever that is. Yeah, click the plus button, media texture, twirl this down, media source, this is going to be the texture that you just, actually no, it's a uh, material, this is going to be the material that you just made, so you're going to find your VP Composure material, plug it in, and it's not working! Oh god. So let's figure out what the deal is. Media plate one. One going into emissive color. So let's see, is our video still active? Okay, you're still getting video, which is good. Should I? Oh, I know what I did. There we go. You don't want to use input. You want to use transform passes, and then the button for material pops up, put in there. Obviously you can see I still have some transparency coming through my key because I literally did it in one click, but you can go in and dial that in if you wanted to by going to your uh, media plate, going down to your key, and starting to adjust some of the parameters. Um, if you click on your composure, you can press P to pull up your preview of this so you can see what you're outputting. So go down to material parameters and adjusting your black and white clip usually helps dial it in just a little bit. There we go. It's a little less opaque now. Or a little more opaque. Less. I don't know. But it's working. So now you have your video inside of your scene. Um, now let's talk about motion tracking. Alright. So to get motion tracking to work inside of Unreal. There are a couple things you have to do. So we're using the HTC Vive Pro 2 that has two controllers and then we also have a camera or just a tracker that you can use for essentially anything uh, that you want to have tracked. And that's really nice because it has a quarter inch thread at the bottom so it's really easy to screw onto the top of a camera. To set that up first um, you have to have Steam VR installed which we already do. So you can see that right now the base stations are active. If I go and turn on the camera tracker, um, you'll see that pop up here too. Cool. So it's right there. It's active. Sometimes things like to fall asleep. So if you're wondering why you're not getting any response from any of your tracked items, go to your Steam VR panel and just make sure that they're online. So we can close that. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up Live Link. And what this is, it's the panel where you can add in tracked elements. 
So we're going to go to source, live XR source, controllers, and then you have HMDs, which is head mounted displays. So check both of those. You really don't have to check this one, but for the sake of this, we will. So you'll see the head mounted display right there, which is always turned on when you're uh, when this headset's plugged in, and the Steam VR tracker. So we, uh, Unreal can see both of those, so now we have to pair that up to the actual camera. So down here under the details panel, uh, if you go to your cinema camera actor, make sure you have this selected, click add, and then you're going to want to go to live link controller. So now that is a part of that. And then subject representation, go to VR tracker. So that just moved the camera in real space, probably about like three meters, um, or I guess digitally about three meters. So we want to make sure that we have a way to control this that's not necessarily um, just physically moving the camera around the scene in real life because that is a little impractical. You can see right now that this is paired because if I go to move the camera, see right now I'm just panning left and right on the tripod. You can see that that same movement is reflected inside of the engine. You can do the same thing with tilt too. So let me go to perspective, left. You can see the camera right there. And you can see it tilting on its axis. So in order to be able to move this camera around in the 3D environment, you need to parent it to something. Because right now if you tried to move it, oh wait, that was the wrong one I had selected. Um, right now if you tried to move the virtual camera, it would not want to move with you. See, it just keeps snapping back into place. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into your scene outlier, or scene outliner. You're going to want to create a new shape. You can This can be whatever shape. I'll just do a sphere. And I'm just going to name this VP camera underscore anchor. And the way this is going to work is pretty similar to how null objects work inside of After Effects. This is going to be invisible, but it's going to control the superposition of all of the assets you parent to it, which in this case are the camera tracker and the camera itself. So. What you're going to do is you're going to take this camera, where is it, where is that cinema camera actor? Yeah, here's your cinema camera actor. You're going to take that and you're going to parent it to, or make it a child of the anchor. So that's going to move it around a lot. But basically, now whenever you move this sphere, that's going to be reflected in the camera movement in your 3D world. So. Since we don't want a big sphere moving around and casting shadows everywhere, you can turn off the visibility. So go to camera actor, search for visibility, turn that off. And now basically you're just going to use this control right here to move around the position of your camera in 3D space. Alright, so now to get your mixed composite from Unreal back into your camera, you are going to want to go to your composure settings. Go to output. Add an array element. Capture output. Oh, and that's actually because we need to make an asset that is your black magic output. So you're going to press control spacebar. Go into here. Make see media black magic media output we'll call this BMD video output double click on that 
going to configure this. Now we're using the output, not the input, so we want to make this DeckLink 8K Pro 2. And this is coming at HD 1080p, 30 frames. We're using external time code because it's running off of the card, not the engine. Hit apply. I'm going to change this back to... Actually, it's coming out as 8-bit, but it is... Okay, yeah. 8-bit, VITC, save, exit out of that. And now this will pop up inside of here when you go to search for it. So, if you look at your camera in real life, you'll be able to see this window reflected inside of whatever external monitor you're using with motion tracking and any other things you have applied to that. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, that works.